Hey guys, this is Eddie from E11 World, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about my photography workflow. This goes from backing up all your photos after you've been to an event, and the types of backups, where you should back them up, uh, the services, the, um, and all that stuff, the details. This will be part one, and then I'll also do part two, which is actually importing the photos into Lightroom, and uh, what you can do, what's the best way I found to actually select your photos and do your basic editing and then move on to the advanced editing afterwards. So let's dive into it and I hope you guys will like this series. So first I wanted to talk to you guys about the different types of backups and for the longest time I used Flickr and it's free, it was good, you know they gave you the one terabyte, um, it has its limitations, one is the videos where you can only upload up to uh, 200 megabytes, I believe. Maybe they changed this, but um, for photos, it was unlimited. Now it's only for JPEGs, probably PNGs too. So that was kind of a downside. And I was always searching for a free solution. So the next thing that came out was Google Photos. And don't mind the incognito mode here. It's just because I'm logged in in the other ones. So here I'm not. And you can see probably everything better. Anyways, you can like go and check out every one of these links that I'm going to be uh, adding here. So Google Photos came out and it was great. They gave you unlimited storage for photos and videos. And I'm sure like, you know, there's a lot of people out there who really want to take advantage of this stuff. I was one of those people because I always shot videos alongside doing some of the photography and I do both anyway. And for me, I saw an opportunity to upload everything for free. For the longest time, I was staying away from uploading anywhere, just backing up locally. But you know how that could be. You lose a drive, you lose everything. Even though I do have a NAS, you know, um, that's like eight terabytes and drives here and there. It's just still all local. And I'm not, you know, looking for a solution where I want to back up something offsite. It's just too much headache, really. So the easier solution, which you can't really stay away from, all your life, no matter how much you fight it, at one point you're going to be one of those people that, you know what, that's it, I'm going to go online. Even if it's your own backup, like even if you own your own hosting somewhere, it's still online. You're connected to the internet, you know what, anyways, that's a topic for another day. So, talking about Google Photos, limitations, 1080p for video and photos, 16 megapixels. So. The things that were really good about at first, I thought, you know what, this is good, okay. So 1080p, I'm okay with. I don't care for 4K or 2K or 8K or none of that stuff. Um, for photos, you know, they came up with uploading raw images. So for a while there, I uploaded everything, just like Flickr. And then I started to see the limitations. So some things were, uh, let me just kind of bring you guys this uh, here. Let me see. My Google settings. All right, so now you can see it here. Um, basically, it says high quality. You have to select this for um, your f so that you're able to upload everything for free. And you know, you select which folders you want. I have my two cameras, previous one, current one, and upload raw and PNGs. Now, raw is the thing here that I'm worried about. When you go to it, you can hook up your Google Drive to to basically load all your Google Photos in there as well. I thought I was actually uploading them and just converting my 18 megapixel to 16 megapixel, so lower resolution by a little bit. But actual photo sizes was changed quite a bit, like really, really a lot. JPEGs was, you know, from two or three megabytes to like less than a half a meg or around half a meg, which is okay as long as I'm getting all the quality, whatever. But raw photos, 25 megs or whatever, or, you know, around there into like one point something megabyte, that doesn't sound right. I didn't even notice this. I just thought, oh really, that's the setting. Okay, let's do it. But I was looking the other day and I'm like, oh man, really? So apparently it changes like your image to a JPEG. You know, it adds that, you know, instead of .CR2 for my uh, case for Canon, into .CR2 .JPEG anyway. And I was losing all this quality. So now I'm looking for an alternate solution. Um, I noticed this online and there's probably tons of this, but this is kind of the better one. I, I checked one of the better ones. So you guys can go ahead and check out their plans, but I thought this was, you know, decent. Five bucks a month, not so bad. Really good. Five PCs and Macs, right? Up to five PCs or Macs combined. 
And all this stuff here sounds really great. I haven't tried it myself, but this might actually be the one I try. Or Crash Plan, which I have friends who use this. Uh, we use it at my work as well. And this is actually one of those solutions that work as well. Really, really good. Um, you know, you can, you guys can go check it out, but I'll just give you the, the whole, like the features in a nutshell, which is very similar to this. So you get the encryption, you know, some of the security, which for me, I'm concerned about security and speed. Those are like my two top priorities. How fast I can download and, and, and uh, upload all my stuff and then how secure it is. Security, it's never going to be 100% for anything online, just in general. Emails, whatever it is, never 100%. Let's just put that out there. Okay, so speed is the next thing. Um, I like the things like version control, whatever, archiving. For me, this is basically a solution where I want to just back up. Okay, I'm not looking for something that, oh, if my drive died, I need to work on it right away. You know what, I'll just download the folders I need for that moment. But again, it's... It's another hassle where you have to download whatever. So all things aside, great services here from CrashPlan and SOS Online Backup. Um, this one is, I think, around 10 bucks Canadian a month. So, yeah. And um, I'll, I'll jump into a couple other things here. Uh, I'll show you in a sec. Um, free alternatives also, Microsoft Sync Toy. I found this about a month ago. Really good, where basically it can back up folders that you set to other places. So, you know, for example, if I want to back it up to my NAS or to another drive, I can do that. The only downside is you have to actually launch this uh, little uh, utility from uh, Microsoft. Um, you can schedule these things with like using something like PowerShell or auto schedulers from Microsoft or third party programs. Um, so this works really good. On Macs, I believe there's Automator. You can do something like that, but you know, not SyncToy. Obviously, you'll have to use something else. I'm not sure if actually SyncToy will work on a Mac. It might be one. Or anyways, those are alternatives. Um, Cobian Backup was another good one I used for a while. It's no longer being uh, you know upgraded or anything. So this person was just doing it for himself, I guess. You know. So the alternatives to this, if you ever use Cobian Backup was or is a Crash Plan's free software. So they offer free software right on the go. And uh, basically it does everything that SyncToy does, but probably better. And, um, you know, also encrypted, whatever. So basically it backs up, again, all your files somewhere else. So in this case, I could have an online backup like Crash Plan or SOS Backup. And I can have another backup that goes just locally. So maybe it's overkill, but for some people, that's a necessity. So in my case, this actually might work, but all in all, I still think I might go online just because my drives could still die in my NAS, which yes, I know I can upgrade, but my NAS is already about 10 years old. So I'm kind of at that point where I have to basically buy another NAS. And I'll go into this stuff um, here right away. Um, so... You can buy an NAS, and here's the price. This is US dollars, around 550 for the NAS itself. Then you go and get the drives, and the drives are probably, you know, I looked at the other day where regular drives, three terabytes, around 80 bucks, but I think NAS drives are a bit more expensive. So let's say it's like 150, three, four terabyte drives. And uh, so you're looking at roughly, you know, 1200, maybe. 1500 something like that. Um, that's US. Um, let's say 1000 to, to 1500 1400 depends on the price of the drives and whatnot. US. In Canadian, it's a bit more. So the drive here, or the QNAP, for example, is 744 I have a Netgear right now, um, but I'm thinking of going QNAP. So my point is, this stuff can get expensive, and you're paying all this money right away. It works out to about the same thing if your NAS lasts 10 years. 10 years, um, it might actually be around, you know, 1200 bucks when you're paying 10 bucks a month anyway. So it's kind of the same thing in terms of cost. But for me, it's, you know, whichever, which is best, which is easiest, which is less hassle. You still haven't figured out completely for what I need to do. But anyways, those are the solutions that are out there. If you guys know of any other solutions, let me know. Um, so this concludes part one, just to kind of want to let you guys know about all the stuff that I know that's out there, the stuff I've personally used or looking to use. 
So hopefully this is uh, something that you guys can think of. Uh, watch out for part two coming up real soon. And this is going to be about actually importing your photos, editing them, you know, basic edits and advanced edits. So if you liked uh, this video, please thumbs up, subscribe. You better subscribe. All right. Okay. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one from this uh, photography workflow series. All right. Cheers to now.